And during my time here, I've come to realize what makes Haven so special. It's a flower shop run by multiple generations. A bar owner who greets every customer by name. It's a spring festival tradition going back a hundred years. History, loyalty, pride. These values which define Haven are the same values that Typhon was built on. And that is why our partnership has been so successful. It's been my privilege to renew Typhon's commitment to Haven. We believe in this community and we're tremendously excited for its future. Thank you, Diane. I think I speak for all of us when I say we're eager to make this official. So, time to vote, folks. And then lunch. Fine. You are not fine. We have to get you to a doctor. What happened to you? I found out something you need to hear. I'm sorry. What? Alex, you're hurt. <sighs> Do you need help? We can call an ambulance. Typhon's been lying to all of you. And so has Jed Lucan. Alex, what's going on? Fuck you. What the hell happened? I was down in the mine last night. I saw what Typhon's been hiding for 12 years. Jed Lucan isn't a hero. That whole story is a lie. Jed caused the accident. And then he abandoned seven of his men. He let them drown to save himself. There were pictures of me and Gabe down there in the dirt. Because one of those miners was my father. Typhon wanted to keep this covered up in case it jeopardized the vote. All they care about is making more money. They'll do whatever it takes to push this expansion through. So they decided to bury the evidence and nothing was going to stop that blast. Not even the fact that there were four people up in the mountains. That's how Gabe was killed. Jed knew all along. He covered up the truth about the past, about Gabe. And when I found out, as you can see, he tried to kill me too. Why aren't any of you saying anything? We don't want to embarrass you, Alex. Try me. These accusations are... Well, they're insane. And trying to go into the mine was obviously a very dangerous, very illegal thing to do. But we all sympathize with your situation. You've been through so much. Your brother was your only family, wasn't he? I can only imagine how much you want an explanation for his loss. Something to give you comfort and make your life seem less unfair. 
You know there's proof of the cover-up. You had Pike arrest me to suppress the evidence. Officer Pike arrested you for stealing items from my purse. Perhaps you were looking for evidence? And I found it. Which is why you and Jed tried to threaten me into silence. Dad? Do you have any idea what Alex is talking about? No. I don't. I've tried to be there for Alex since Gabe died. I thought... I don't know. I hoped I could be something of a father figure to her. All I can guess is, sometimes when we're hurting, the people we lash out at are the ones who are trying to help. This is an act. You're lying. Please. <sighs> I know this is hard to accept. You all trust him. I did too, but I'm telling the truth. I believe you. Of course I do. I believe you too. I'm horrified and shocked and Still processing everything, but I believe you. I would like to speak. This young lady came to Haven as a stranger, but over the last few weeks, she's become one of us. Now, her story certainly seems unlikely, if not impossible. But she deserves at least an investigation of her claims. We ought to take her seriously. I agree with Ducky. I've always found Alex to be a very trustworthy person. She wouldn't make these accusations lightly. Something must have happened. Miss Lath, there's no actual evidence of anything. Maybe not, but that's what I think. Actually, Diane, there is evidence. Oh, for fuck's sake. I have a USB stick full of recordings. Yes, we went through this yesterday. Your superiors closed the case. None of us have time for conspiracies. Yeah. You're trying to weasel your way out of things again, huh? I know your game. I know Don't how you... test me, Jason. <laughs> you know what? I'm not scared of you anymore. And not of you, not Typhon. All right, that's enough. Deputy Pike, do you have some kind of personal issue with me? Like hell I do. Jason. Well, given that your judgment in this matter is emotionally compromised, you should probably remove yourself oh, from- cut the crap. If you think you could shut me up- Jason, with it. I think you better call it. Concerns me that a voting member of this council you believe me. admitted to a personal bias. This is a load of bullshit. I don't believe this. is getting ridiculous. We're all getting ahead of ourselves. And it wants the important I'm so sorry. I'm not I'm going first thing tomorrow. Shh. Dad. Please. Come clean. We'll figure it out together. It amazes me. The extent to which she has manipulated you. Come on, Dad. Never in a million years. Come on. I hate seeing you do this. My own son. Dad. My own goddamn son! Stop.
I know why you tried to kill me. It's not what you tell yourself. That you thought it was best for Haven. This was never about Haven at all, was it? This was about you. I know it's easier not having to think about the men you buried. You want to look away and pretend the people you hurt aren't people. But I won't let you. My father worked for you. His name was John. He made a lot of mistakes. He wasn't a good father. I think he came here trying to be better. But you killed him. And then Gabe, my big brother. Haven was his second chance. He was so proud of who he'd become. A great boyfriend. A cool dad. But he died. Because of you. And then there's me. For so many years, I just wanted to survive. To get through. They even changed me. I started to think about the future. I want to belong somewhere. I want to know that there's a place and a group of people who wouldn't be the same without me. I was starting to feel that here. And you tried to murder me. You would have ended my life just so you wouldn't have to face the truth. You've forgotten it, haven't you? You've plastered over it with another story. You tell yourself you're a hero, a strong leader. Sometimes that means making hard choices, decisions that could lead to people dying. Few men could handle that. Haven's lucky to have you. But that's the lie. If you scrape it away, what do we see? Eleven years ago, you led a group of men to their deaths. And you couldn't even say those words out loud because you're a coward. You couldn't imagine saying it to your wife, saying it in front of your son. Every day you were brave enough to go underground and look death in the eye, but you couldn't muster the courage to admit the mistake. I can feel you trying to pull away. Don't. Truth hurts. Sometimes it's so awful you think you're gonna break. But when you come out the other side and you're whole and free and still alive, then you'll finally know how strong you really are. see the truth about you. 
You hate yourself. You hate what you did in the past. You hate what you've done to keep it secret. And the more you deny that hatred, the worse it grows. I know who you are. I've seen the worst parts of you. And I forgive you. Yeah, the silence is worse. I need to get some air. After summoning all my strength and willpower, I'm now ready to move from the bed to the rooftop. Even though it was hard, I'm glad I let Charlotte overcome her own anger. I think it gave her the strength to support me. I felt very close to Ducky after our dance. I guess he felt the same way. Good thing I sold off all my Typhon stock. I'm pretty sure my voice was already heard by everyone who needed to hear it. Is it weird that the part of this that bothers me the most is nondescript dive bar? Now that my inaction, in the face of injustice, was itself a terrible wrong. And I know that I will never be able to undo the tremendous pain and loss I caused. I do not ask for forgiveness. The only person who could give that to me is... is gone. Thank you. There are no victories at the end of this. Just more painful truth. I'll never understand exactly what happened to me down there, but I'll always be grateful. I'm glad he held on to it, for whatever it's worth. You ever swing a pick before, Mr. Chen? John. And now, but I. 
I'm a hard worker, and I learn fast, and I don't mind long hours. You don't have somebody waiting on you at home? No, sir. Well, John, guess you're a hell diver now. Chad must have thought he was seeing a ghost the first time Gabe walked in. Berlin does sound pretty good right about now. I've been playing a lot the last two days, trying to think things through, but I realize it's actually the opposite. When I'm playing is the only time I get to not think. Not think about Jed, or Gabe, or Dad, and what could have been if he'd never come to this town. Most of all, what I don't think about is me, because I've never been good at that. And suddenly, it's the only question that's left. So, I just keep playing. Maybe I do deserve some dollar sign justice, but I'd much rather be able to move on with my life. Hey, Steph. Alex, wait. Before you say anything, I have to get this out. Okay. What you did at the council meeting, it was the bravest thing I've ever seen. And it made me want to be brave too. So, here it goes. I want to be with you. I don't give a shit about playing music or seeing the world. I mean, I do, but... Only if it's with you. And if you'd rather stay here instead, then... <sighs> Fuck it. <laughs> I want to stay here too. I've never had anyone barge in to tell me that they wanted to be with me before. Yeah? How'd it feel? You've, uh, given me a lot to think about. Well, good. That was the idea. You know where to find me. Good luck, Chen. Thanks, Steph. All right, just tell me. What? My future. What to do? The night of the Spring Fest, Steph made a strong push for leaving with her. Playing on the road, the excitement of the unknown. 
course. That was before all the shit went down. <laughs> Come on. You're the know-it-all. So tell me. Actually, I do know what you should do. You should stay in Haven. You really think so? Of course. You finally have a home, a job, people who actually like you. Why would you give that up? That's true. <sighs> then again, maybe leaving would be better. What? You're young, you suddenly have a little money, friends. And don't you think it's time to give this music thing a real shot? No, you should definitely leave. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Stop it, Gabe. I don't need the mysterious spirit bullshit right now. I just need... I just need my big brother. I'm sorry. I know. But here's something. It's three hours from now. A bus pulls away. You're not on it. And neither is Steph. Life goes on. You get a job working with Steph at the record store. All those years of being a music snob finally pay off. And little by little, time does its thing. The apartment starts to feel less like a museum and more like a home. Thoughts of Jed, of Typhon, even of me, begin to fade into the background. Rooftop is your stage. You perform every week to a small but adoring group of fans. Maybe while you play, you wonder what could have been. 
performing for more people in more cities, sharing your music with the world? Or maybe you never think about that much at all. You don't know exactly when it happens, but one day you look around and find that you have transformed this place just as much as it has transformed you. And the most extraordinary thing of all is just how normal it feels. You don't question it. You don't doubt it. I wonder what might have been. It's your life. The life you fought so hard to have. And for the first time in a long time, you just live. Thank you. Don't mention it. You really think I'll transform Haven? Of course. You already have. With your gift, your music, just by being you. But Alex, that doesn't mean you have to stay. You have the potential to do that anywhere you go. Where am I supposed to go? I don't have any other home. That is true, but you didn't have any home before coming here. And look what happened. The truth is, there's no telling what that version of your future might be. The only promise is the adventure. So, what do you think? I know what I want. 